So yeah, flying along at 35,000 feet, I don't think yeah, 370 is is in a long time. It's in the next uh, two and a half hours, so plenty of time. It's actually 350 is close to the optimum level, so it's good. We're kind of gonna turn away from the uh, from the wind a little bit, which which is gonna help. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Then you will sit and kind of keep your fingers crossed that nothing goes wrong. As I said, like an engine failure is not so critical because the drift down takes a long time. And uh, you can go beyond the critical area. But uh, uh, if, uh, if something happens uh, with uh, the pressurization, then it's uh, obviously more, much more critical. So go here, next page, and then go to uh, route 2. And I can also display the terrain. So you you wouldn't really navigate with reference to the terrain display, but you can see on here on the display, uh, the highest terrain within the display is at uh, 25,200. So it doesn't mean that it's on the route itself. It can be on the side. Here it's difficult to work out exactly where it is. Uh, but um, yeah, it's uh, this one is the, the highest terrain on the display. Uh, further question? Uh, let me let me see that. Uh, yeah, after purple, that still applies because the. Uh, uh, you have to go all the way to if you uh, if you have decided to uh, divert to uh, to Kashi, for example, as we uh, as we kind of plan to do if something happens there, uh, you can only go down to uh, 10,000 feet. Oh shit! Okay, um, so let's cancel the warning and just cancel it. Take the oxygen mask. Okay, put the oxygen mask as there. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear each other, that's good. Uh, check the cabin altitude and uh, the rate. Yeah, it's uh, climbing like uh, we are cruising level. Okay, that's not gonna help. Uh, we'll go to the oxygen there. Okay, that's on. Cool. Uh, call for emergency descent. So, descend, descend, 28,000. Flight level change. Uh, the thrust lever I can't really close here. And speed brake. And down we go. Oh man, that's no good. Keep the speed as it is. Even reduce the speed a little bit maybe. Alright, uh, let's start the clock to see how long it takes to go down. So initially we only go down to 28, huh? we said until Gulf Tango uh, 51, so no, it's actually Gulf Tango 51 is... I know it's after Gulf Tango 51 we go down to 26, so initially only to 28. Okay. Uh, right, in the meantime, it would be Mayday, 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 all that stuff, but communications also very difficult in the area with the mountains and stuff. Uh, look at the checklist. So I'm doing several things here at the same time. I'm like uh, a one man bound. Uh, cabin altitude auto, cabin altitude is excessive. Yeah, dog, the oxygen mask. Psh, yes, we have them. Establish core communication. Yeah, you can hear me. I can hear you. Good, good. Uh, check the altitude, cabin, and rate. Uh, cabin altitude, sorry, and rate. Yeah, we've done that. Cabin is uncontrollable. Yes. Uh, you didn't take the button there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I pressed it already, but uh, keeping an eye on the descent as well. 
uh, to descend, uh, move the thrust reverse to idle, they are, extend the speed brakes, yeah. Uh, structural integrity is in doubt, keep the speed as is, pretty much descend at uh, VMO MMO, we're just descending at the uh, uh, current speed, and that's the cabin altitude checklist complete. And we go ALT, stow the speed brakes, uh, we'll keep 28,000 feet, we'd have advised the crew emergency descent, emergency descent, something like that. Review the ICAS, uh, cancel the ICAS, but the cabin altitude stays on, of course. Uh, for the uh, navigation, now what we can do is actually activate this. We would have stayed pretty much on the airway. Uh, go track select, activate that since we're gonna fly that. And uh, execute. And now we can go back to AirNav to navigate that. Uh, why is it not taking it? Oh, because we passed it, maybe. <laughs> yes, it's taking it. So now we passed that Golf Tango 51, we can go down to 260. So once again, flyable change, continue the descent as quickly as possible. If we look at the display here, and that's already happened about 3 minutes ago. So remember, we've got about 20-25 minute uh, time frame to consider. And you can see you're very close to the mountains there. I'm doing all these things at once, it's uh, obviously a little bit hectic, but... Uh, but yeah, you can see we're very, very close to the mountains. It's a nice river down there. Not that you would appreciate the scenery in that scenario, but... So yeah, now we stay at 260 until the next waypoint. Which is uh, 15 before per bar. Yeah, okay. So we stay at 260, keep the speed. Ground speed 375 knots. Uh, no, there's not really any strategies for the two configuration. If you want, like you know, structural damage and no damage, um, you would have to kind of um, improvise and and take it as it comes. Um, well, see how it works. Like from what I remember doing it in the simulator, it's uh, very tight to at least get to 14,000 feet. It's uh, really tight on the 22 minutes above all if uh, you have, uh, yeah, if you can't accelerate too much or uh, in that case of uh, structural damage, you have to limit the speed. Uh, it's a little bit tight on the 22 minutes, but um, as uh, what just happened there, you know, it's uh, it's really if it happens at the most critical moment, uh, then you're really unlucky. And uh, to tell the truth, the way that um, the the strategy is kind of approved is is really kind of is really marginal on the time. That's for sure. The 20, 25 minutes uh, can be very tight. But uh, no, otherwise there's no uh, there's no different strategies according to the to the different uh, uh, depressurization conditions. So we've got another 14 miles until we can go down to 22.6 on the way to our Pampa. So if we look outside. Uh, we kind of left high terrain a little bit behind on the side there. If we look outside, uh, th that one doesn't look very far. Uh, yeah. Uh, you make also an announcement, you know, on the PA, the crew would still be on the oxygen. Uh, they would feel maybe the aircraft has leveled off uh, because there's a bit of, uh, uh, of a level of a level section here at the moment so they would feel the aircraft has leveled off so they would go on the PA and ask them to remain on the oxygen 
uh, 26,000 feet, I mean, it's, uh, it's not going to be good for them. So you will tell them to stay on oxygen at the moment. Well, I didn't do as well because I'm uh, one man bound here. And <laughs> uh, it's hard to uh, to do the things. You would, you know, maybe put the lights on as well to be visible. Uh, and the transponder, you will set like uh, 7700 for the uh, emergency, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, you would have shout out Mayday, Mayday, all that stuff. So yeah. So we've not got to uh, is it 15 miles before purpose, so we can go down to 226. So I go to 226 and continue the descent. Uh, thrust levers come back to idle, yeah. I get the speed brakes again. Try to expedite. Anyway, we can't really uh, go uh, further down, uh, as we said, until we get uh, to uh, this waypoint there, DSC 53, that I made up earlier on. So there's going to be a long period level at uh, 22,600, where we can't really uh, we can't really do much, uh, unfortunately. So we're kind of flying at quite a high altitude, totally depressurized for quite some time. So it's not uh, it's not ideal. Got speed out. Speed brakes are retracted. So obviously, please bear in mind that uh, this is uh, a PC simulator, so it's kind of uh, difficult to. Uh, to do it exactly uh, as real, but I hope it's kind of showing you a little bit uh, what it's like and what's uh, what's involved and and this uh, horrible scenario, to say the least. Um, if it happens in real, then it's uh, it's a really bad day in the office. Yeah, it's true. It's uh, as I said, it's it's going to be very tight. Um, and uh, if you can make um, at least 14,000 feet, then it's not, it's it's all right. Uh, what's the distance? Sorry, uh, 42 miles. So 10 minutes, 42 miles. Yeah. We can maybe try to uh, push it a little bit, but if uh, if there was a big hole in the in the aircraft, you know, you're supposed to uh, to limit the uh, the speed and all the maneuver loads and uh, all that stuff. So it would be a little bit. Uh, it's a compromise, maybe to try to uh, to get to you know, speed up a little bit, but also kind of try to. Uh, to take care of the aircraft if there's a, if there's a big hole. So yeah, so then again, get on the P again. Cabin crew to uh, stay with the uh, with the oxygen because at uh, 22, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, cabin altitude here 22.7 and that's uh, basically our, our flight level so uh, we are totally uh, depressurized um, and uh, yeah it's as if we were flying in a Cessna 152 at 22,000 feet you know it's, it's no, no pressurization at all so you're kind of uh, sitting at 22,000 feet there with uh, uh, yeah uh, that will be awful uh, anyway for the moment we're doing good, we're just navigating, we're going towards uh, Kashi, the weather is good there, we kind of checked it earlier on. Uh, the Delta P is gone, yeah, if we look at the air synoptic. Uh, no, 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 that's not, hey, my bad. Uh, yeah, the Delta differential uh, is zero because it's, as I said, it's totally depressurized. 
Yeah. Wouldn't be very nice for the ears or for the sinuses and stuff, you know, if uh, if you go cold and stuff, a lot of passengers would be uh, injured, possibly. Uh, bleeding ears, bleeding nose. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be very nice. Temperature, <laughs> interestingly enough, is still 24 degrees. Although uh, uh, to get like such a rapid depressurization, there's probably a hole in the fuselage somewhere. But in the cabin, it's still 24 degrees. It's still showing like you know nice temperature outside and the simulation at the moment is uh, minus 31 so yeah but in the aircraft is still 24 degrees it's still like nicely conditioned there you know uh, terrain wise it doesn't look too bad there's not a lot of white now uh, it looks like around is uh, is relatively uh, all right uh, but uh, if you were like maybe under radar as well, they could start maybe descending you as well if they had uh, radar contact. But in that area, uh, I doubt it uh, to tell the truth uh, until you get like way deeper into China. Uh, initially, around the boundary, there is not so great. So, yeah. So, yeah, so basically, when the event happens, uh, as I demonstrated, uh, get the oxygen mask straight away and that's the that's the main thing as uh, to kind of uh, protect uh, yourself um, then uh, establish communi crew communication you have to still have to be able um, the, the noise and everything must be awful but you still have to be able to communicate with your colleague uh, check the cabin altitude and uh, and rate but pretty much straight away at the cabin altitude here I climbed to the cruise level and the rate was uh, at some point I saw more than 2000 feet per minute so it was climbing very quickly to the cruising level so there was not much to, to be done uh, and then uh, press the, the button there for the uh, passenger, passenger oxygen for all the mass to, uh, to drop down uh, to, to press it several times because here it doesn't really uh, it's, it's hard to have a feel for the button but you just like press the button uh, keep it there for a while for like a second or two and then it, it, it drops or confirms at least that it's uh, it's dropped um, and then uh, yeah the pilot flying would uh, start the descent so uh, set like uh, the altitude uh, close the thrust levers um, sorry altitude flight level change close the thrust levers expand extend the speed brakes and then uh, kind of work out like like that kind of descent as much as you can and uh, uh, the uh, well the pilot monitoring non-flying would uh, maybe go on the radios call mayday 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 emergency descent or uh, set all the lights to be visible for air other aircraft uh, maybe set the uh, transponder to the uh, emergency code uh, also, the the captain on initiating the descent would uh, go on the PA to call like uh, emergency descent, uh, so that the crew is uh, is advised. Yeah, things like that. For the moment, 17 minutes. Uh, we're gonna be able to uh, go down to 14,000 feet. So it doesn't look too bad. As I said, it's very marginal on the 22 minutes. Uh, maybe once we clear that ridge, I don't know, maybe we'll be able to uh, to descend uh, terrain wise, it doesn't look too bad obviously you're visual with the, with the terrain um, so you can also maybe adjust visually but uh, I would be reluctant to kind of uh, descend visually with the terrain in sight, yeah maybe but uh, I guess it's easier to kind of stick to the procedure uh, I think above all when like uh, all hell has uh, broken loose we've kind of uh, been beyond most of the terrain now so if you if you were confident you know that you could actually yeah go down then you could start maybe at least descending on the display there's nothing left really significant you could maybe start you know to descend a little bit lower uh, we'll just stick to the plan once again here for demonstration but uh, 
yeah, you could maybe start descending because, as I said, you've got a visual with the terrain there. You can see, you know, if you're high, if you're low compared to the terrain. So uh, you could maybe improvise a little bit. Uh, at the end of the day, you've got the flexibility as, you know, uh, as the pilot of the aircraft, you've got the flexibility to kind of uh, take those decisions as well. Anyway, that's the point now. Go fly, will change again. Close the thrust levers. Go on the speed brakes and uh, descend. And that's now 21 minutes and a half since we started the timing. It didn't start the timing exactly at the beginning of the event, but not far from it. If the passengers are on like oxygen in the cabin, then uh, hopefully everybody is in a, is in a good uh, in a good state. And even if the oxygen runs out in the last uh, minute or two, uh, I guess at uh, 20,000 feet or whatever, uh, you can still breathe momentarily. You know, you can still breathe for a while, uh, maybe for like a couple of minutes until you start passing out and stuff. So. Even if the uh, oxygen system stops after 22 minutes, 25 minutes, um, uh, then you're already at 19,000 feet. And as I said, like the event here happened at the at the worst moment uh, when you can only go down to 28,000 feet, and uh, uh, and you're the furthest away from uh, uh, from the uh, lowest altitude you can go to. So. Uh, so yeah, and, and this example, it's really the worst case scenario. So yeah, 23 minutes almost now, 18,000 feet, it's, it's not too bad. Actually, no. Um, traffic. Traffic. Oh, Andre Falcon, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna actually need to reset the QNH because the transition is at 157. So, we'll go QNH. We need to reset the transition. If it's available here, it might not be because it's one five seven, is it? Oh no, one three seven eight. Uh, one five seven. Yeah, sorry. So, and it's in um, meters as well now in China. So it is four thousand two hundred meters. Is that correct? Yeah, 4,200 meters. Right. Speed brakes retracted. It's leveling off. So yeah, we made it to uh, 14,000 feet in about... Uh, uh, yeah, let's say 25 minutes. Um, with the uh, structural damage uh, so we can't really speed up and also by following the plan exactly as as, as it's supposed to be uh, but you could see that before uh, starting the descent down to uh, uh, 14,000 feet you could have started already a little bit the descent because the, uh, the terrain kind of looked clear around so you could have started the descent a little bit earlier uh, and that could have uh, saved maybe a minute or so Uh, yeah, in this uh, in this case, uh, you can either fly um, um, on uh, on a flight level, uh, so keep standard. Uh, otherwise, uh, ask for the local QNH. Local QNH is better, but um, uh, in this instance, the, you know, in, in this location, for example, the communication will be uh, really difficult. And anyway, the the strategy is um, is uh, built with uh, flight levels, so. Uh, you can uh, you can stay on a flight level initially. But you're correct to say that uh, you can ask for the local QNH as well.
which is actually the more accurate thing to do. Yeah. Now, as you can see on the display, the lowest terrain is 9.5. We're getting away from the mountains, really. It's a little bit hazy. Uh, we're going towards like the lower terrain. The mountains are at the back behind us there. You can see the now around where we are. It's relatively flat, some sort of a plateau. Uh, so. Once again, maybe also you'll be uh, picked up by a uh, radar, so they could tell you that you can descend, so... Um, but we'll just stick to what we have here. Uh, and really, if they had, like, um, obviously, as I said, uh, if you're on radar, then uh, ATC can take you uh, lower. See, now 6.9, so theoretically, we could descend already. Alright, so we're approaching uh, Delta Sierra Charlie. Uh, we can uh, set, uh, I think it's 9800. Which is uh, 3000 meters, yeah. So that's uh, slightly lower than 10,000 feet. So once again. Maybe go on the speed brakes again, try to expedite the descent. But at the same time, now you are like in a good position, so uh, you've got to bear in mind now that when you're descending, uh, the ears are still gonna be very sore. Descending at 3000 feet per minute. Uh, I didn't really uh, pay too much attention to the rate of descent uh, further up. Uh, but I think at some point I saw about three, four thousand feet per minute, something like that. Uh, you're not going to get much more because you're not at uh, maximum speed uh, for this uh, scenario, but uh, still a relatively good uh, descent rate. You see now all the terrain is to the uh, to the west and south there, uh, but now we are going down towards the the plain, so or some sort of a plateau. So we, we're doing good. Right, that's gonna level off at uh, 3,000 meters. So once again, in China, fly with the uh, uh, meters, which kind of adds to the complexity a little bit. All right, so um, at that stage, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna fly to the uh, to the V1. Hold on. sense we can put that on but the seatbelt sign that's not the main concern so we'll reduce the speed maintain uh, 3000 meters which is 9800 feet and uh, yeah one guy would fly uh, the other guy mostly the, the probably mostly the, the captain would go on the pier uh, this time to make a passenger uh, announcement but also prior to that uh, advise the cabin that now they can move about and uh, drop the oxygen because uh, we're now at 10,000 feet so it's good uh, make a PA to passengers like obviously inquire as to uh, how everybody is doing with the cabin crew the passengers see if uh, there's any injuries as the cabin crew to report back uh, things like that uh, and then the, the two pilots will get together we would have uh, decided uh, previously, obviously, uh, on the uh, destination uh, airport. So we'll just again confirm the weather is good. Uh, we'll check uh, the moment we are overweight. Uh, so we got about 10 tons to get rid of, uh, which is not good news actually. Uh, uh, because, uh, yeah, we don't uh, want to waste too much time, like, you know, having to, uh, to dump the fuel. Uh, so that's uh, something uh, the the company would be uh, obviously advised of the diversion. Uh, so that yeah, that would be a big uh, big situation. So yeah, that would be uh, probably the decision I will take, as to kind of uh, forget about the 
the fuel. That's an interesting view, actually. It's actually really nice with the with the haze, the the mist uh, above the ground, and uh, the mountains uh, sticking uh, out in the distance. That's really nicely done in the simulation. Anyway, we're turning here at uh, Ankev. I'll go track select and now I can execute the diversion. So that's not going to uh, mess up too much with my... Uh, so select uh, diversion now. So if you would look at the route page, now the destination is uh, Kashi there. It's updated the destination. And yeah, let's do that. Okay, change of plan, because uh, the weather has changed. Um, so we'll go ILS Yankee 26, yeah, 05, and the arrival. I should have checked actually earlier, that's my bad. I uh, kind of assumed in the scenario that it was alright. And it's the 19 Alpha. But it was not. YTC could actually offer a shortcut as well. So, oh, no, no, no. and this one is uh, easier. Six zero five, and then six zero two, and on to the ILS. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Minima this time is forty seven hundred. Uh, oh, now we've got a time for some reason. It's kind of reset it, so we're gonna be landing in 10 minutes uh, with 35 tons of fuel, which, as I said, is uh, overweight at this time. But there's nothing we can do really. I'm not gonna start dumping the fuel now after having like a big hole in the aircraft. So we're gonna start the descent. Uh, we're going down to. After the 704, we're going down to 7879, so we'll wait for the arrival profile. Uh, in the meantime, I set the VRF. So 35 tons of fuel plus the zero fuel weight, which was 225, so that's going to be about 260, yeah, not too much to. Uh, Drop on the weight, maybe 259.5. I can already maybe start reducing the speed, dropping some flaps, maybe try to burn a little bit of fuel. Uh, so, flap 30, 152. Let's set an auto brake setting and say 3. Uh, we'll do the ILS uh, 26 in uh, Kashi. It's uh, quite hazy. The latest uh, weather I've got in the uh, simulation is 8,000 meters minus 7 QNH 1027. Uh, so 1027 actually. Oops. No inches. Back to hectopascals. Uh, this one can come as well. Right, so you'll do the decent checklist uh, recall at this stage. It's passenger oxygen on. Let's check the notes. There's no notes. Auto brake is set. Landing data VRF is 152 and minimum is 4700. Approach briefing, but assume it's complete. Now we can descend. Go flaps 1. You'll have to expedite the descent, which is not ideal, but you don't want to end up low or too high, I mean, on the arrival. Go flaps 5. And do the approach checklist as well. Ultimate is 1027. 
that's the approach checklist complete. We'll have agreed maybe with the cabin crew to try to make the cabin as safe as possible, but kind of I'm sure it will be chaotic, so kind of uh, make sure that everybody's sitting and kind of uh, wait uh, to get on the ground and uh, and then start disembarking uh, and then get uh, people uh, looked after. We'd uh, call ahead, of course, for the uh, medical assistance. Above all, if there was uh, a lot of uh, injured uh, passengers. But yeah, of course, uh, as I already said, that wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a nice uh, situation at all. That would be really a, a bad day in the office. Try to minimize a little bit the rate of descent now. Because, uh, yeah, depressurize, you're flying like a Cessna, so on the Cessna, if you're descending too fast, then you start, uh, your ears uh, are getting a little bit uh, sore and they start popping, so. Right, and now we can go down to uh, 6 9 on the arrival, that'll give us the ding dong that the cabin is ready. Continue the descent. Thrust fly will change speed. Go flaps 15. Increase the drag to try to burn a little bit of fuel, but as I said, at this stage you'll accept that we are overweight. Ah well, as uh, there's there's a day for everything and save 05, here we are today then. So you can imagine there's much more to, to it than what I'm uh, demonstrating here. Uh, first of all, it's a one-man show here just by myself playing on the uh, on the uh, simulation there. So it's, it's not easy. It's totally out of context, out of uh, the flight deck environment. So it's, uh, as you know, it's a bit of a, of a sterile kind of thing. You, know, you don't have the normal sequence of events and everything. But I hope it's kind of giving you a little bit of an insight. Uh, into uh, why it would be uh, in real for uh, for the pilots to deal with and uh, how like uh, uh, the whole thing is uh, is flown and so yeah just uh, a little insight there's much more to it of course and uh, I'm sure I've forgotten things and I've kind of not followed like a strict kind of uh, uh, process and, and the way I've done things here but it's just to kind of give you a a bit of a, of, a, of a taste. So we're now turning towards the ILS. We've got correct sensing. Uh, we assume we are clear for the approach. So we'll arm the approach mode. Uh, sense, gonna glide slope capture. Uh, Mr. Approach is 6 9 as well, so we'll leave it as is. And uh, drop the gear. Flaps 20, arm the speed brake, advise the crew to sit down and display the landing checklist. Here's the runway ahead. So the, the scenery there is very basic of course. Uh, we got the gear down, so we got the speed is good. So flaps 30, speed checked, flap 30. Set VRF plus 5. So since the uh, event started, it's now 50 minutes. Uh, so it doesn't matter for the ox oxygen anymore, but uh, you can kind of see that it takes a long time to get everything sorted out. Uh, that's the landing checklist complete. And for uh, 50 minutes, you will be in a state of. Uh, Distress for some passengers, and you know that wouldn't be uh, very nice. Not bad scenery. One thousand. Flight director. Oh, 
light the last bit manually. Approaching two six. At least we've got an ILS. And there seems to be a bit of a headwind. The uh, ground speed is less than the TAS. So that's an indication that there's a bit of a headwind, but it's not too strong. 500. That's checked. Plus 100. Check. Minimums. I'll continue. Landing. 100. If the frames are playing up a little bit. Doesn't matter. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Boom, well, probably planted it, but it doesn't matter here. Bring up the reversals. Nuts. Start the reversers. Manual braking. I will take the first exit. Not so sure about the scenery here, but hey, I'll do my best. I guess uh, in real, I mean, I've never been to uh, to Kashi, but uh, the airport will be uh, relatively basic. The runway is uh, as is in the simulator here, so it's a long runway, so you can land the triple seven there, no problem. Uh, there's no hole in the aircraft, but uh, yeah, uh, rapid depressurization now over the the mountains, so at the most critical time. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, kind of uh, giving you an insight. And, uh, and what's involved, uh, first of all, from a planning point of view, kind of obviously think that uh, this kind of uh, problem can uh, can happen in uh, in real, um, and you have to uh, to plan for it. Uh, although as it doesn't happen uh, all the time, but it can happen. So uh, it's good to uh, first of all to kind of uh, plan for it. Have have some sort of an idea what to do if it happens and then uh, once it happens uh, then uh, how to uh, to deal with it and what's uh, what's involved so uh, yeah here here we are uh, obviously I, I may have missed things and uh, kind of uh, um, not show you the whole thing and as I said in the simulator here it's a little bit of a, of a special uh, situation but um, I hope I kind of uh, shed some light on uh, on the matter. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, if you have uh, any uh, last questions, then uh, please uh, go ahead.